The remainder of chapter one focuses a lot on order of operations and rounding. So in looking at this problem here, if it says evaluate using correct order of operations, order of operations has another one of those um, little phrases that we say or abbreviations that we use to help us remember. So we have this and a little saying that goes along with it. So please excuse my dear Aunt Sally is something that we use all the time. Now parentheses are the P, exponents are like the little numbers in the air, multiply and divide are the M and the D, and A and S is add and subtract. Now knowing that information, it is pretty important for us to be able to look at this and say, Oh yes, I can tell first I need to do this, this, and this. If we didn't have these rules, we'd all be doing something different at the same time. So usually what I do with something like this is I make the list off on the side, and then I typically just check them off as I do it. So in this one, there's no X or no parentheses at all. So this P is already considered done. Next thing that's here is exponent. And we have one exponent in the problem. Now remember, 3 to the second power means 3 times itself twice. So 3 times 3 would be 9. So this becomes 27 divided by 9 plus 4. And I can check my exponents off the list. Now you'll notice I bracketed the multiply and divide and the add and subtract. So really what that means is you do multiply and divide together during this third step from the left to the right. So if I start on the left, that's where it's 27 is, I'm going to go across and see if I find any multiply or divide. Doesn't matter what order is when, whichever one you come across first from the left to the right, you do first. So this one right here would be my first one. So 27 divided by 9 would be 3, and then I'm going to bring my plus 4 down. All my multiply and divide is taken care of, so I'm going to check that off. Add and subtract is the only thing that's left here, and thank goodness because that's all I have left down here. So if I do 3 plus 4, that's going to give me 7. That's going to be your final answer. Now, I just want you to take a look over what I've done as I've solved this here, because I kind of used a best practice that would probably be helpful for you. Did you notice I actually underlined things as I went? So I knew on this step I did the 3 squared, or the 3 to the second power. I knew on this step I did 27 divided by 9. I knew in this step I did the 3 plus 4. So it's, it is really important that you consider that. Also, please check your stuff off. If you have this on the side, it will keep you honest and keep you from doing anything crazy or not doing things in order. So let's take a look at the next one. Now this one's a much more complicated one. So the first thing we have to do is start out by writing this down the side. And I'm going to put those brackets in there because remember we said initially that would help us keep it, you know, so we are doing the right thing at the right time. So in this one, I don't have any parentheses again. So this P part I can check off. I'm going to check off on the top this time. Um, exponent is next. I have one exponent. 2 to the second would be 2 times 2, which is 4. So then this is going to be 4 times 5. And then divided by 4 times 4. Oops. Let me get my eraser. That's plus 4, my bad. Times 3. So our big focus on this is, is really to be able to get our stuff together so that we can solve the rest of the problem. So if I go on now in this problem, my exponent is done. The next thing is multiply and divide. So I start over here and the first thing that I will see is a multiply. So I'm going to do that part first. So this will be 20. Then I'm going to go through and write out the whole rest of the problem. I know there's more multiply and divide.
but I'm going to do them a step at a time. So then the next part would be this, which would be 5. Then the next part would be this, which would be 12. That takes care of all the multiply and divide. What I've left is add or subtract, so 5 and 12 together would give me 17, and 17 would be your final answer, and that would be your final place. So if you're looking at this, let's just go back and review a minute. We did exponents first, then there were lots of multiplying and dividing that were on here, including some that were hooked together. So I did the first two, solved it, did the next two, solved it, did the last ones, solved it, and then I was down to just add. So remember when you're evaluating using that order of operation, there could be multiple steps that you could do and you're going to have to pay attention really to the whole thing. Okay, now, this next set has to do with rounding. Now to round, we have to think about the value that we need to round to. And this one says to the nearest 10. So I'm just going to highlight the numbers that are actually in the 10 spot here to kind of help us. Now remember, the way that this works, the little rhyme that we use is five or more raise the score, four or less let it rest. So you really have to look for a number that is five or larger to be able to round up. And when I'm looking, if I'm rounding to this digit, I have to look at the one that comes after it. And I have to see if that number is five or higher. This one's not five or higher. So this would just be 40. Now really the way I think about it is this. If you're rounding to the nearest 10, this number is between 40 and 50. So when you're rounding to the nearest 10, which one is it closer to? And this one would be closer to 40 than 50. So on this one, this is the number we're rounding. The number after it is 5 or greater. In fact, it's just 5. So remember, if it's 5 or greater, you round up. So this is enough to round up. So that 1 will become a 2. And then I replace that spot with a 0. So 920. In this one, I have to round to the 6 spot. The number that comes after it is not 5 or bigger. So that means I'm just going to replace it with a 0. Okay, let's try another set. This one is round to the nearest 1,000. So these numbers right here are in the 1,000 spot. So that means really the number that you're rounding to, there can be a non-zero number there, but everything after it's going to have to be 0. That's the way it works when you round. So if I'm rounding to this spot, the number that comes after this is not 5 or greater. So that means it's going to be 2,000. Again, back to the example I used before, if this were on a number line and you had 2,154, that would be between 2,000 and 3,000, but it would be closer to 2,000 on the number line. It's kind of what rounding is like. So in this one, I'm going to round here. This number that comes after it is 5 or greater. So that means this 2 is now going to become a 3, and then I'm going to add zeros. Okay, now, this is probably one of the most missed ones in the whole thing, and not because it's hard, but because of the way that the directions are actually laid out here. So I want to talk about this. Use the principles of estimation. That's kind of important. We'll have to think about what that means. To find an estimate. So I want you to find an estimate for this calculation. So if they want me to estimate this, they want me to make this a number where only one digit is not zero. So the only way that could happen is if I did what I was doing in the last one and like rounded to that spot right there. If I did, whatever comes after it is going to be zeros. Whether I round up or not, it's going to be zeros. So if I look at this one, this is the number, that the digit that comes after it. It's five or greater. So I'm going to round this 3,000 to 4,000. So if I were to take this now, 4,000 times 4 is going to be 16,000, which means that this, when I really would multiply this together in real life, it would be close to 16,000. Remember, estimation is just used to figure out if you're getting close or not. That's really the object, so I just want you to keep that in mind. Okay, now, we have kind of covered add, subtract, multiply, divide. We have talked about rounding. We have talked about order of operations.
And those are really going to be the big focus then of your homework, the study plan, and then your practice quiz and practice test.